Today I'm going to show you how to make this procedural shader that transitions between two images. You can see it's kind of a straightforward tile setup here. You can also see I've got kind of a uh, spherical gradient setup here that influences that one. And then finally I have a radial setup in the third demonstration here. So it's kind of a, a random selection process where it selects random areas of your image and just distorts them from one image to the other. To start off, let's delete our cube and bring in a plane here. I'm going to change my top right to the 3D viewport and this middle is going to be my shader editor. I'm going to hit and get rid of that shelf there, zoom in a little bit here and then scroll across the top and turn off these overlays. I'm going to hold down Z and move my mouse up and go into rendered mode. I'm going to come to this drop down menu, select that material that we had on our default cu uh, cube there and just call this toot mat, just like that. So uh, this is going to be kind of like that last setup here. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi and I'm going to delete this principled BSTF here as well. But uh, let's go ahead and set it at F1 Manhattan. And we're going to change this to 2.4. And let's just turn down the randomness for now all the way to zero, but we'll probably change that. And I'm going to hit Control T and bring up the texture coordinate and mapping node. Make sure this is plugged into object there. And then uh, let's go ahead and bring in a color ramp for right after here. Make sure color is uh, running into here and then let's bring in two mix RGBs set this first one to color burn set the second one to color dodge and just plug color into color one there and same with this one here let's see what that's doing so far it just basically gives us a random assortment um, we're gonna want to set both of these color twos to white as well just like this here so I'm just gonna set this factor at one this one doesn't actually matter here I could have left it as is and this is the factor here that we want to control as we move it to the right we can see the whole image becomes white and as we move it down it just becomes a little bit darker we've got all these uh, you know gray squares there we can change the size there by moving this up and down but at 2.4 it just made it so the squares kind of are you know close to the edge there so that's why I did it at that number so what I want to do is make sure that these kind of snap to either white or black I don't want any of these gray values and uh, a way to do that that I figured out is just by adding in a math note here and changing it to snap and basically this says that uh, you know these values are going to snap to a multiple of whatever number we have here you know it could be 0, could be 0.5, could be 1, could be 1.5 if we increase this to 1 we get everything either you know 0 or 1 right here so if we change this here uh, basically all of those squares change randomly to one. You know, if I move it all the way back, they change all to zero, which is black. So I can then use that black and white information in a mix shader here. Let's go ahead and bring that in. I'm just going to place it right here. We're going to plug this uh, right into the factor there. And all I'm going to do for now is just set up two diffuse shaders here. And just run, actually, not diffuse, let's do emission uh, so it's a bit brighter there. And I'm just going to place these both right here plug this into the top one and plug this into the bottom one there. I'm going to change these colors here. Let's just go green. We'll go orange for this one here. So we can see as we bring this across the right these uh, images uh, or these squares just randomly change to orange until it's all completely orange when this goes to one. I'm going to bring a value node here. We're, we can just plug this right into this factor then we can control this with uh, you know this right here. Because it's so sensitive uh, a good way to do this is just add a math node in here and change this to divide and change this bottom value to 10. And so instead of going from 0 to 1, this now goes from 0 to 10. So it's a little bit easier to change, less, uh, less fiddly there. So next up, let's try and create some variation here. First of all, let's come down to this randomness and we can adjust this, you know, give us some interesting shapes there. Let's set this to 0.3. I like the look of that. And let's do something here to this line right before the mapping node. I'm going to add in a noise and place it right here and then bring in a mix RGB and place it right here. I'm going to plug object into that color too there. And now this factor, the slider, just allows us to have a controller for how much noise influence we have in the uh, top right here. I'm going to change these settings on the noise to 2.2 for the scale, 7 for the detail, 0.75 for the roughness, and then let's go 8.2 for the distortion there. You can kind of see these interesting shapes taking place here. Let's move this back and forth. We can have more or less of those. Uh, let's set this mix factor at 0.85, but you can do whatever you want. And then if we change this value over here, we can see now it adds you know these random pieces in just like this. 
I'm going to add some uh, images in here in a second, but before I do this, let's explore one more possibility by adding a gradient texture right here. We could change this to spherical. Let's take a look at that. Now we can see it slowly adds in these uh, spots there. Let's uh, bump up this so it's a higher scale as well. So we can see this is uh, kind of an interesting way to introduce a new image. We can see it's not in the center, so let's fix that. Let's duplicate this mix, change it to subtract, and change this value to 0.15, just like that. Now it should be pretty close to the center. Uh, it's an easy way to do that really quickly. So we can see this kind of gives an interesting thing. If we change this from spherical to radial, it would be kind of interesting too. Again, it's just uh, in the center thanks to that second uh, mix RGB. And here we have a nice radial pattern this time, switching between the two images. So let's set up some images here. I've got some photos I took a while ago. What I can do is I can just drag and drop these in. Let's uh, put these leaves right here and this jelly, no not a uh, jellyfish, this um, sea star right here. So I didn't mean to do that. Let's just place this right here. We'll plug color into that green one and this one into this right here. So now we can see we've got these two different images here and it just changes from one image to the other as we drag this slider across. Let's get rid of this gradient here and plug vector into vector and uh, now we can drag it across and it's a little bit small. Let's go back to uh, what was it? 2.4. Yeah, just like that. So now we can see as we drag this across, it just switches between the two images there. So we could adjust this around if we wanted. Why don't we try changing this factor to 0.5 and change this one to 0.5 as well. We could sync those up with a couple extra notes. Uh, I don't, don't think I need to really worry about that right now. But uh, it's kind of interesting when we zoom in here because I changed that factor. It's a lot more erratic on the edges there, just the transitions between the two photos there. We could change this here as well. Let's say from Manhattan we change it to Minkowski. You know, get a completely different setup there. Um, because the noise texture is uh, having a, a pretty big influence on it, it does look very similar at the edges there, but it is going to be different. So if we change this back and forth, again, we can just see the, uh, the change, the transition between the two photos there. So that's it. Uh, you know, today was a pretty short one. I just wanted to show you the kind of transition shader, I don't know what to call it, between the two different images that you can make here. It's kind of like the setup I had in the last tutorial and I just kind of happened upon it by accident there so just wanted to share it with you guys. If you have any questions please let me know and let me know if you have any issues setting this up as well. You know I have tested it but you never know there might be something I didn't think of that could be done better so anyways thanks a lot for watching.